We're talking about feeding the world today and moving from simply getting enough calories to getting the right nutrition. The first 1,000 days in a child's life are critical for this. If he or she doesn't get the right food, brain development is affected and the child can lose 10 to 15 IQ points. To talk about this, let's meet Dr. Chris Nelson, President and CEO of global nutritional ingredient company Kemen Industries. I'm Angela Corp. Welcome to The Business Debate. Chris, thank you for joining us at The Business Debate today. Really my pleasure to be here. Now let's look at the issue I was talking about in the introduction there. Why is the nutrition that a child gets in the first few years of its life so important? Well, it's really about what I term the first thousand days, the first thousand days after conception, critical for both mom and baby during that period of time. Mom to be able to provide the proper nutrients to the child, the child obviously to develop, but then after birth to be able to really flourish. It's during this period that really the IQ of the child is set, as well as the eventual stature that this child is going to be able to achieve. I know you have an example of India where you say there are 80 to 100 million stunted children because of inadequate nutrition. Tell me about that. In India, what we've been able to see, and this is really documented through the United Nations, that literally 80 to 100 million children never reach their genetic potential. And that's because of malnutrition. The malnutrition is characterized not only by lack of calories, but also lack of protein and protein being absolutely essential for IQ development and brain development during the first thousand days and then after that child is starting to grow. We're trying to produce more and more food for a growing population with finite resources. How are you helping? In India is a good example. Our company is not only uh, in, the, in that country but worldwide and we provide nutrients that go into animal feed as well as various products that go into human food. Nutrients that allow, for instance, a cow to be able to produce more milk, chickens to be able to lay more eggs. Milk and eggs, good example of almost perfect protein for nutritional uh, supplementation of diets and be able to provide that critical protein needed so early in life. The need for protein and the demand for meat in particular is always growing. Do you see perhaps eggs and milk taking over the role as the main protein in diets? Overall, I think we all recognize that meat is one of the things that's almost a luxury item in our, in our world. Milk and eggs, because of their amino acid composition, which really defines their nutrition, are almost perfectly aligned with what the human body requires for growth as well as sustaining. We think that these two particularly will be providing enormous amounts of nutrition during the latter part of the century. You do a lot of work, I know, on getting the nutrients we need into the food we eat, in particular uh, lutein for eye health. What are the most important breakthroughs you're seeing there? You know, lutein's a good example. Many people 10 years ago had never heard of this particular molecule. It's the yellow material we see at the, every fall when the chlorophyll leaves the leaves and the, they turn yellow. That yellow is actually lutein. Mother Nature has used that molecule to detoxify what are called the blue wavelengths of sunlight. These are highly energetic wavelengths that actually do no positive good for the plant and have to be detoxified. The plant synthesizes lutein to be able to do that. Well, interestingly, that same molecule, we preferentially deposit it in our eyes in a particular part called the macula. The macula is the part that allows us to read. If we don't get enough lutein, about 10 milligrams a day, we come down with something called macular degeneration. It's an irreversible form of blindness. You can obtain lutein by eating 9 to 12 servings of fruits and vegetables per day. Unfortunately, most of us don't do that. And so what we do is that we actually harvest lutein from marigold flowers, purify it, and then make it available in various supplements around the world so that you can get your 10 milligrams a day, keep your macula in great shape. Do you see any other way of feeding populations in the future? Could reducing waste be the key? You know, the United Nations has really cited that up to a third of the food that we produce is wasted in some sort of form or manner. 
this could come actually before it's actually consumed or at the, at the time of consumption by simply not eating what we have. There's a whole variety of things that need to be done to make certain that the food that's from time of production is kept in very good shape until we have the choice of whether to consume it or not. We're actively involved in that with products such as antioxidants to prevent fat from going rancid. Our goal is to be able to see that in the latter half of the century that the 9 billion or 10 billion people that we have on the planet at that time have adequate nutrition. We think that's the goal that we have to achieve as a company. Chris, thank you very much for joining us today. My pleasure and thank you for having me. And join us next time on The Business Debate when we'll be discussing the latest innovations in enterprise cyber risk and smart cities. Until then, goodbye.